Hello friends, how are you? My name is Ari Ferrier and today I'm going to try to explain why the link between cats and witches in a Norse perspective. Talking about the goddess Freya and the feline cult associated with her. So you can better understand why this connection between an animal and a witch. And also talking about Scandinavian magic. Well, this is the third video related to cats, because as I've said before, my best friend Mr. Tico died, my cat, and I wanted to make a couple of videos in honor of his memory. I have decided to upload this video on the 21st of April because it was the day of Mr. Tico's birthday. Well, anyway, before we start, I also advise you to watch the previous video about the feline cult and fertility magic associated with the Norse goddess Freya, where I focus much more on that aspect. And that video will also help you to understand the content of this one, because once in a while it will be inevitable making a few references about what was said in the previous video. Well, I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. Black cats are the pets of witches, everyone knows that. Our children grow up with that. But why exactly? If we take a look at Scandinavian history of witchcraft, maybe we will find a few answers. There are a couple of examples of cats having been used in Scandinavian magic in medieval and modern times. Although, unfortunately, such accounts have been omitted in the medieval literature because magical books, magical parchments, grimoires, books of spells were viewed as being given to people by the devil, in a Christian perspective of course. Therefore such literally works have been destroyed. Although in the case of Scandinavia, especially in Iceland, by tradition, magical books are seen not as having been received from the devil, but rather from the dead ancestors, the guardians of the pagan traditions, and as such, such magical practices were kept alive and the knowledge passed down from generation to generation. So in the north we have a variety of accounts concerning cats and magical practices. We have accounts of black cats magically enhanced and controlled and used for protection. Cat ads in medieval and modern times for fertility. Cat skins used for spells and one particular account, uh, interesting and also gruesome, the skin of a black cat used as canvas for magical signs inscribed with virginal menstrual blood. Well, there are Icelandic magic spells and staves that require cat hair to find a teeth. The goddess Freya in mythology was associated with rectifying theft. We have mythological accounts about her stolen items, or the goddess herself helping recovering other gods' stolen items. There were spells which required a cat's paw to bring deception of the eye and to know how to do them, which sounds shamanistic in its use and the main purpose was disguise, uh, perhaps even shape-shifting. And as I've told you in the previous video, cats in shamanic contexts were linked to shape-shifting, uh, not only of the shaman itself, but guardian uh, and helping spirits which hated the shaman, and often came in form of animals, particularly the cat in Nordic cases. And Freya herself as a shape-shifting falcon cloak, reinforcing shamanic magical practices with the feline cult. Because, as you know, Freya's animal is the cat. There are also accounts to reinforce what I said in the previous video of cats being filgur, spirits that hated a sorcerer or a seer in magical practices. But the filgur weren't just to help in magic or protect someone. It could also be spiritual entities which came to attack people, sent by someone to attack one's enemies. And the accounts concerning that tells us of such spiritual entities coming to f in the form of cats, choosing the cat as the vessel to walk the, this world and cause physical harm. For instance, in Scandinavian folklore, 
in Norway we have the smurkat, uh, in Swedish uh, the vjera, which is a creature that would steal milk from neighbor's cows and bring home to its owner, or in the Swedish case the person who conjured uh, such creature out of a few ingredients and objects including cat's hair. And let's not forget that Freya is also a goddess of love and sex and their obvious association with cats. Cats were used in love spells. In Scandinavian magic with connection with desire, love and lust, feline body parts were used in such charms. The use of cat heads may or may not be connected to the act of communicating with Freya, as heads were commonly understood to, to be where the soul lies. So the purpose may have been to use the spirit of the cat to contact with the goddess. With this being said, all these examples, we start to understand why the demonization of cats, which is so deeply carved in our subconscious. Upon this panorama of Northern Europe, Christianity and all its followers sought to destroy these magical practices, as well as any pagan activities of the past. If the objective was to completely convert people to the new faith, they also had to convert their consciousness. And for that, fear had to be placed in the arts of the pagans, fearing what was once activities commonly practiced by these societies, fearing the very understanding people had of the world and the gods, completely changing their worldview. As I've said before, there is a great gap in mythological accounts and Icelandic works such as the Prose Adda and Poetic Adda concerning goddesses. Norse mythology belonged to the oral tradition, which inevitably changes with the passing of time and when generations come in contact with other realities. But when such accounts were put to parchment, it was made by Christians, in a time when Christianity was already the official religion and, well, in the case of Iceland, Catholicism. So it's small wonder the lack of information concerning goddesses and the female role in Norse societies. As I've said before, Freya's pets, steeds, are the only animals belonging to a deity that we don't even know the name, while all the other animals of male gods we know it perfectly well. Even the accounts themselves turn around male gods, while the goddesses are seldom heard of or come in humiliating situations or acting a little bit dumb and the male gods come to the rescue. Uh, in most cases, not all. Well, the Norse accounts most probably had loads of references to goddesses as well as to gods. They're were thousands of goddesses that seem to have been completely forgotten in Norse myths. My point is, with the coming of Christianity, the myths themselves changed and the associations between cats and female magical practices were conveniently wiped out from the literary sources. So, the cats' association with female pagan magic was just, was just bad news for cats because, unfortunately, they started to, mis to be mistreated after the conversion to Christianity, all over Europe. Even nowadays, most people can't stand black cats or are terrified of black cats crossing their paths, it's a bad omen and such. Or people not adopting black cats because they can action with evil and witches, or adopting only in Halloween because it's cool to have a witch's cat during that night and the next day people abandon the animals again or worse, mistreat them and kill them. All this because in the Middle Ages cats were demonized alongside with witches that used such animals for their spells. Now, the cat must have been really important in pagan societies an integral part of pagan religions Otherwise, why demonize such a creature, connecting it to witches and the devil himself? And such a great persecution on cats as much as the persecution of witches. 
it seems cats must have been an important symbol in fertility pagan magic, protective magic and other such activities. The goddess Freya was once very popular in Northern Europe, worshipped by both men and women. Her popularity and what she represents, female magic, female sexuality and sexuality in general, contributed for the infrequent myths related to her. And on that line of thought, all the lack of information about goddesses in general. We know much more about male gods, because in the Hebraic tradition, from where Christianity comes from, male figures are more prominent than female figures. Christianity found Freya and, and their sexuality offensive. It was a direct conflict with the celibacy of Christian priests. And I wouldn't be surprised if Freya's cult members and leaders had a hard time with Christians. Cats certainly had. Freya's importance was still very much active even during the conversion. There is an interesting Icelandic account of an Icelander supporter of the conversion who was outlawed for blasphemy because he called Freya, and I quote, a bitch, meaning she was a whore. My apologies, but that's the exact historical account. So the Christians too in the far north had a hard time with those who worshipped Freya. And if it was hard to deal with them, why not strike from the bottom first? From what's easier and less complicated to deal with? Cats inflicting indirectly and directly damage upon Freya's cult, building a narrative of cats being demons, and from that point paving their way to finally convert to Christianity the pagans of Freya, by striking fear upon their hearts, demonizing the animal connected with the goddess. Listen, Freya's sexual appetites are well known in the myths and that's one of the reasons why she's also associated with cats. Not just for infertility aspects but because cats are the, one of the most lascivious of animals known in the north. Now, Christian conversion was not just of people. To successfully convert people, they converted their gods as well. Odin gained similarities with the Christian god, Loki with the devil, Baldr with Jesus, and on it goes. But what about Freya? The highly worshipped female deity of the North had to be converted into a Christian female figure linked to the Holy Trinity. To facilitate the conversion, so people would have comparisons, similarities with the old religions, being familiarized with something to easily adopt it. The Virgin Mary, the goddess of the new religion, was the obvious choice, the only choice. But Freya was so the opposite and seen in the eyes of the Christians as a prostitute that they couldn't possibly compare her with the Virgin Mary. So better try to wipe out her existence and connections with female magic and sexuality, a sort of Christian cleanse of sins committed by the goddess herself. The vast amount of power Freya held as well as what she stood for unfortunately condemned her, her cats and everybody else's cats. In pagan religions such as in Northern Europe, women, much like men, held important positions in those societies. And women, especially in positions concerning ritual practices. The high positions of women as sacrificial and ritual leaders, and I'm also talking about uh, women from nobility, was their downfall. Because as soon as Christianity came, women's power was completely choked and as a result, everything connected to them and magical practices was also demonized in the process. Condemned. Just so you have a better perception how far this goes, in Northern Europe the word cat started to be used as an insult to man, referring to them as being idle, cowards, scared, weak as women. It's no coincidence that we nowadays insult men as being pussies. From Pussycat, the 
and, and pussy also being the slang word we call the female parts. With Christianity, it became common knowledge that witches transformed themselves in cats in order to cast spells on their victims. And to protect oneself from sorcery by cats, there was only one solution. Kill the cats. Cats and witches, and witches sorry, started to go hand in hand. Witches rode cats, held their sabbats on Fridays, Norse Freya's day, not Friga. A special evil day for Christians because it was the day Christ died. All of these associations because of the pagan past, the feline cult associated with Freya, which was the most worshipped female deity of Northern Europe, and their influence on those societies was so deeply carved in the consciousness of the Norse that the only way for Christians to convert those people was to completely wipe out every association between her, cats, sexuality and female sexuality and magic. But they weren't able to wipe it all out because even though the Norse myths were written by Nordic Christians, they couldn't just completely put Freya aside, not as they have done with the other goddesses. Freya had been too important and they had to keep some of the mythological accounts about her. Alright friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video and well, once again this video was in honor of the memory of my cat, Mr. Tico, who passed away on January 2018. He was, he was a very good friend, the best of companions, and wherever he is, I hope he is in Freya's loving hearts. Once again, thank you so much for watching. All the links to my social media are down below at the description. See you on the next video and back for it all.